Welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. This is the Legacy DLC run and we're in the Lazarus Project 5th mission to be precise. My name is Saiken and we're going to blind playthrough on a Nightmare uh, Iron Man run. We finally got our 6-man team together as a quick reminder for the last time. And this is an explosive team. We got a Grenadier, a 2 Ranger actually, um, a Reaper is actually acting as a pseudo sniper. Uh, we got um, uh, a Templar on top of that, and a fully combat spec um, specialist. So this here is as offensive uh, of a team as it gets. Moving up. And there's the first pack. Interesting. Headed there now. So we could engage them right away. That here is an option. It's actually not a bad option to be honest. You know what? Let's do that. I'd like to get the bonus points because we're still, I feel, a bit behind the curve. They've got a position. So killing them this turn will be valuable for us. Um, I would like to start with Redford. Well, we could kill the mutant. It's not going to be an issue for him. What's our chance to actually hack this guy? We could stun him with a 68% chance. Good enough for me. The other alternative is to just shoot him down, which I think is not even a bad pro uh, proposal, to be honest. So instead of taking our chances, this here. Oh. Wow. Really? By taking away the cover, she can now no longer see him? Well, that sucks. Can we hit all three of these guys? Yeah, we can. Well, that's going to take care about the uh, tear of the mutant. Maybe even kill the Codex. Deal substantial damage uh, to the mech. Right, 
Hair trigger free action, wonderful. even better than I would have expected. Yeah, and we're just going to take the 100% melee attack. Bradford just charges in like a madman, kills it as a blade master, and there we go. So first round, destroyed the whole pack. These guys seem to hit quite well. I take it. Well, that's fine. First round, early bird bonus. Right the there. Days, Ramirez was what you would have called a survivalist. I don't know her exact motivations, but she had taken to living off the grid well before the invasion even started. While things were falling apart for everyone else, isolation kept Ramirez out of the alien sights. Okay. Well. We are moving on. Glad I kept up the cardio. Concealing ourselves. Hidden away. Running. Gosh, we are rushing the mission quite a lot. Alright, Bradford is ready to take the leap here next turn and just go for it. Should fuck around uh, with the Andromedon. Unfortunately, the Andromedon has way too much armor. Go for the priest, man. Dude. One damage? Really? The thing about Ramirez was, despite all the time she spent on her own, she never turned into the kind of loner crackpot you'd normally find out there. For some of us, the isolation of surviving on the fringes was almost too much to handle. Not Ramirez. When we finally picked her up, she was as sharp as any XCOM recruit we had ever had. So we will need a grenade for this. Triggering the pack with a chrysalid. Well, it officially apparently had been triggered already. Got one plasma grenade here. Yeah, and that's going to shred them really, really well. I will Moving on to the other side, just in case.
All right, plasma grenade it is. Here we go. Solomon is a bit too slow. It feels he's lagging behind. And I'm also worried about the trace of it. 128% crit. Um, yeah. Let's do this. Killing the Andromedon. Moving up here, time for the chrysalid, but let's reload first, then time for the chrysalid, chrysalid is almost down, um, let us kill it. Without revealing ourselves. Now we, as for the Andromedon shell, it could move up here, but we're blocking it. It could move up here, which we're blocking as well, which means it needs to go all the way around to even get on top of uh, this bandwagon. Or it, oh, wait a second, I do have an idea. I do have an idea. Run and gun. Moving over here, not pulling anything extra. Implaceable moves us up here, blocking the entrance. And this here could be another crit. Beautiful. Beautiful. Can we shut it down? Just out of curiosity. 97% chance to disable it. Yes, please. We'll take care about you next round, buddy. Because that offers us the opportunity to just charge in. The one time that our Templar did not take damage was the time when he effectively decided to not participate in the combat. Oh yeah, mind control buddy, that's that's going to solve your problem. Um, guys, wow, are you serious? When Advent started cracking down on livestock and homegrown crops, survival skills like foraging and gathering were all that some people had left to go on. 
These fucking idiots. How do they even dare to uh, to shoot the mind control the soldier? We're just saving their lives and all they can come up with is shooting us. There's a Viper over here. I am on the move. The time for hiding is over. Oh, and the sector pod. Interesting. Not even sure if that's the same pod or if we're looking at two different pods. Central is heavily wounded, down to 2 HP. I think we're looking at two different pods. Not sure though. These guys, however, are definitely up for a, for a real fight. Yeah, okay, sure. That's a fantastic idea. From my perspective, the only way Advent had any chance of finding Ramirez on her turf was if someone from the inside gave up her position. There were a lot well, of fresh faces among her recruits, and it could have been any one of them. Talking about fantastic ideas. I'm on it. This is going to be one of them. Moving into full cover, seeing the sector port. Come on! Nice, shredded them. Super good. We might want to kill the Viper. She's not going to be able to see the sector port. Unless we're taking high ground and combat protocol, that's at least going to deal some damage to him. Moving over On your order. into full cover. And let's try to hit the second port.
We are unfortunately still short. On damage here, we can't really get him down. Yeah, I don't want to move Bradford in. That's not going to end well. Redford stays a bit back. I'm ready. Reloading Overwatch in case someone moves in. And that's going to hurt a lot. But not for us. Oh, Wrath Cannon. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, of course. Well, that's what you get from playing with the big boys. I'm not sure we ever did get the story from Ramirez on what led to the raid on her stomping grounds. I want to say we decided that it wasn't an infiltrator, but the overzealous use of improvised explosives that eventually caught the aliens' attention. Okay, killing the big fat. Uh, Sacrifod. There we go. Wow, really, Bradford? That is one of the weakest misclicks that I've done in a while. Anyways, we're going to kill him, so it's Mess not going target. to matter. Back in. I want to grapple up and get Bradford up here. Not sure where the last one has vanished to. The Spectre is most likely just going to show up. And clone one of our uh, guys. Shadowbind. Cute. These guys have 8 hit points. I remember when we were uh, playing uh, the Foreman run. Like we're looking at Shadow Clones of 32, 35 hit points. 
And I always ask myself, how am I supposed to kill that with ballistic weapons only? So yeah, not a problem at all. Redforge. And moves over. Moves right next to this guy, because it's the last pack. Good old shotgun to the face. Yeah, yeah, I get it. We have saved her. Good old shotgun to the face, and let's finish him. There we go. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. <coughs> Excuse me. We wanted to get a good score. So 190,000 would be nice. That would mean we've got 50,000 out of this mission. I think we uh, did reasonably well. Bradford being wounded by friendly fire. I'm not going to comment on that one. I can get there. Let's go. I'm on it. So yeah, even one of the resistance fighters survived, which I think was not necessarily planned. That's fine. We even overperformed a bit. One wounded soldier. Shit happens. We gathered up what we could from the remains of Ramirez's training area, but it's not like the recruit she was working with had the best. I think we're going to take this. We already got the advanced ones, so the increase is really marginal. But these are additional explosives. I'm, I'm mainly taking it for the war suit, uh, for the exosuit. Uh, suit. The war suit is pretty good. Untouchable, very good. Vanish, very good. Exchange, also not bad. Could help us from time to time. For the Tyvix, good. The rest is also okay. Good, two more missions, guys. Only two more missions, and then the DLC is already over. It's been so fast. Now this part of the story, this is something you won't hear about very often. The origins of Dr. Tigan's relationship with XCOM. He wasn't exactly captured, but when we got to him, he was... at the end of his rope, desperate to get away from Advent. So desperate, in fact, that in a hastily performed fit of self-mutilation, Tigan removed his own chip implant the hard way, through the back of the skull. Ooh. Needless to say, that rendered him unconscious, and with only hours to spare before the aliens realized what he had done. We're going dark. Tigan made contact with one of our people close to Advent before pulling the plug on his chip. 
It was sheer luck that we were in a position to send a team after him. A few days earlier, and he might have found himself with an even bigger hole in the back of his head. So that's 70,000 points. 45,000 points for enemy kills just looks incredibly large. And by the way, um, Tygen doesn't necessarily look like he would be unconscious. Really, Shang? Do we have a seven man team? Yeah, who's that new? Oh, we got a sniper. Ooh. Okay, we have a seven man team. <laughs> I, I immediately want to play that. Um, we're going to see each other in the next um, mission. This is going to be fun, guys. All right, let's see. Bye bye.